Okay. Sorry about that. Big fell. Okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to, so let's say McDonald's is trading at $20 a share currently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sell a $21 call option, which means I'm going to give someone the right to buy the shares at $21. Now, mind you, I do not own shares at McDonald's. Keep that point in mind. I do not own any shares at McDonald's. But I'm going to sell someone the right to buy shares at McDonald's at $21. Then what I'm also going to do, and I'm going to collect 50 cents in premium. Oh, excuse me. Then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to sell in the same trade. I am going to sell McDonald's put options at $19. So notice I'm kind of straddling or I'm, I'm playing both sides of the market. With a stock in the middle, I'm selling a call, an out of the money call on one side, and I'm selling an out of the money put. And on the put, I'm going to collect another 50 cents. And both of these options will expire in, say, the third Friday of September. And I can do different variations. I could, instead of selling them both at the same time, I can leg into them. So that means as the stock goes up, I'll sell the calls. And as the stock goes down, I'll sell the puts to collect even more premium that way. So there are different ways of doing it. But the general idea is you're selling an out-of-the-money call, selling an out-of-the-money put for the same expiration on the same stock. That's called a short strangle. Now, total premium that I'm going to collect equals a dollar. So I'm going to collect a dollar worth of premiums. The 50 cents on the calls, the 50 cents on the put gives me a dollar in premiums. Now this is very, very important because why? This gives me more of a lower cost basis or break even. A lower break even on one side, a higher break even on the other. So this can make, this can become a very profitable trade if McDonald's stays in a certain range. So therefore, I collected a total premium of a dollar. So now, I'm going to say cost basis or break even on the calls call side Okay, so that means my break even on the upside, on the call side, or my would be twenty two dollars. That means as long as the stock stays below twenty two dollars, I made money on the call side and on the put side. Okay, both premiums. No, I can't say both will expire worthless because that's not true. Because I'm giving someone the right to call to call the stock away from me or to buy the stock at 21 but I don't lose money unless it goes above 22 so as long as the stock stays up below 22 I make money on both sides even though I will get called out of the stock at 21 okay so that's the cost basis on the call side
So again, the break even on the call side is $22. So that means as long as the stock stays above $22, I make, I mean, stays below $22, I'm making money regardless. And the break even on the put side or the cost basis on the put side is $18. So as long as the stock stays above $18, I'm making money. So I'm collecting two, double the premiums and I'm making money on both sides as long as the stock stays within that range. Okay? This is a great strategy. Now remember, there are rules even to this and the rules are similar to that of writing the put option. You must really like the stock because there's always the risk of you that you have to either own the shares here if we're doing a short strangle. You owning the shares or you end up shorting shares. And again, I'll get into the shorting part in another segment. Matter of fact, no, let me get into that now. If you read the books, in theory, it says that when you sell a call option, so in this case, I sold a call option for $21, which means I'm giving someone the right to buy the shares at 21, and you don't own it. So let's say the stock goes up to $23, or $25. Let's say 25 to keep the math simple. So the shares, the stock goes up to $25 and you don't own the shares. You're supposed to go on the mark, go in the market and buy the stock at 25 and turn around and sell it to somebody at $21. That's in theory, okay? But, and if you read the, the options books, that's what they're going to tell you and they're not wrong. That's technically correct. However, what is in theory isn't always reality. In reality, what the brokers do is they don't go in there and buy the stock at 25 and sell at 21. If the stock is at 25, you will end up at short stock or owning stock at 21. Now, what does short stock mean? It just means you're borrowing shares. So, but you don't really own it. So let's take, let's take, IBM, because, oh, let's take IBM. IBM is trading at, say, $100. Let's say it's trading at $100 a share. Now, what you would do in theory, and this is theory, but just so you can get the understanding of how short stock works. We all understand how long stock works. You go and you buy 100 shares of IBM at $100, and then you make money as the stock goes up, right? Okay, that's, that's called long stock. Well, short stock works the opposite. IBM is trading at 100. What you do is you call up your broker, and this again is in theory. You call up your broker and you tell him you want to short IBM at 100. So what he will then do is go and find someone who owns shares of IBM, and he's going to borrow those shares from them. So they'll put like a little certificate in their account. So they're not really missing the shares. It's still going to show up as shares in their account. But what it's going to do is it's going to show up as negative shares in your account because you're borrowing. So those shares now come into your account. So anytime you borrow something, you have to give it back or pay it back. Okay? That's how this works. You got to pay it back. So you're not going to borrow high and sell high. I mean, buy back higher because you got to buy it back. So if you're going to borrow something at 100, you want to ultimately sell, I mean, pay it back at 50. So when the stock goes down to say 50, then what you do is you call up your broker and say you would like to return the shares at the, at the current price. And the current, what the broker will do is then just to give back the shares to the, the other person. But now you get a $50 credit into your account. Because why? You're selling at 100. So when you short shares, you're selling first. You're selling something you don't own. You're just borrowing the shares. So you're selling at 100, and then you're borrowing it. And I mean, you're borrowing it at 100, so you're selling it on the market at 100. And then what you're doing is you're buying it back at, say, 50. You keep the difference, the spread. Okay? So then now, in this McDonald's example, because I'm shorting shares at 21, I mean, because let's say the stock is at 25, I'm actually losing money. I'm in the hole $4. 
So the only way I'm going to make money on that in that example is if the shares come down. Because if the shares continue to go higher, I'm losing more and more money. So I have to know exactly where, if I'm going to do a short, that's what they call a naked call option, I really need to know how high this stock can potentially go, realistically. Because what you don't, this is why I say stay away from earnings. Because to do the strategy on earnings, okay, if the stock gaps up, folks, you can be in some trouble. So the key is don't do the strategy on earnings unless you really know what you're doing. Because I will, I do occasionally do this stock, this strategies on earnings because I know what I'm doing. But if, but my. My advice is not to really just do this strategy until you get experience from us selling put options. So, again, so I make money if the stock stays in a particular range. I make money on both sides of the market. And that's perfect because I'm collecting two premiums, which allows me to get richer faster. Okay? Now, so this strategy is just simply called a short strangle. And it, like I said, it is a strategy that is utilized, but shh, secretly. Nobody wants to put that out there. But the real professionals utilizes this strategy. Okay? I don't know if Warren Buffett utilizes the short stringer strategy, but I do know that he utilizes two different strategies. He does utilize selling put options. The strategy I mentioned yesterday, that he also utilizes the covered call strategy. And that is also a strategy I utilize because if I do get the stock, there are other things that I plan on doing. And I will get into that. The, the other strategy that I do is should I get put into shares? So this way I can show you how really even when I lose, I can still win. So I will show you in my next segment, in the next segment on another day. What happens if I should get put into shares? What do I do? Okay? We'll be right back.